video. Right, the main purpose of this video is to revisit corrosion protection on your motorcycle, protecting your investment. But just before we do that, I would just like to revisit the video that I published on Wednesday, chain maintenance and adjustment on the Royal Enfield Classic 500. First of all, a big thank you for the input from viewers. People that have a lot more experience with this particular issue that I encountered on the bullet, which actually wasn't really an issue. It was a mix of my lack of experience with this rather unique system and the fact that the Royal Enfield handbook had a huge piece of information missing. Now, I have to admit, it does seem rather obvious now, but it wasn't apparent at the time of film Bearing in mind that this assembly is situated way down low on the bike and it's not much over an inch in diameter and the fact that you don't actually remove the sprocket nut when you're adjusting the chain I had assumed that both of these bolts fastened onto the same thread but they don't The sprocket nut is called the sprocket nut because it is threaded onto a hollow sleeve that holds the sprocket carrier in place and then the axle inserts through that sleeve so both nuts are actually independent of each other now the reason for this and it is rather unique these days is to allow for a quick release wheel system that allows you to remove the rear wheel without having to disturb the sprocket and the chain which is a fantastic idea and to be quite honest I never expected to see that on what is really a budget bike, the Royal Enfield Classic 500. I think for me the major confusion was of course that the Royal Enfield handbook was incomplete, there was information missing. And when you're making a video like that you can't just sort of fluff over these things and pretend it didn't happen because the whole point of these videos is to give out information to help others and I'm sure other people will have come across this in the past. And being deceitful and hiding it doesn't help anybody. Once you know, you know, but when you're doing it for the first time and you've only got the handbook to work from, you're simply not armed with the information required to carry the job out efficiently and quickly. Right, I'm killing a bit of time here because I'm waiting for some technical information to come through about the product I'm using today. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you're not a subscriber, why don't you consider subscribing? Now, if you do subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell and ensure that all your notifications are enabled. It's totally free of charge and I do offer a full, no quibble, money back guarantee if you don't like it. It helps me out and I really would appreciate it. Right, all motor vehicles are prone to rust. But the difference between a motorcycle and a motor car is that all the bits that go rusty are underneath the car, so generally speaking, you don't see them. On a motorbike, however, all the rust attracting parts are on full display. So one British winter and it can start looking decidedly dog-eared and shabby. I made a video very similar to this almost five years ago. As you know, I do have a body shop background, so from a professional angle I am very aware and well versed in the art of preserving motor vehicles and protecting them from the dreaded rust worm. Now I don't like to think that I'm stuck in my ways but for years I've stuck to the same materials. One thing that does annoy me about this whole sort of motorcycle social media thing especially where corrosion control is concerned is that we're constantly being bombarded with new motorcycle specific gimmicky chemicals that cost an arm and a leg but are nowhere near as good as the tried and tested anti-corrosion materials that have been available to the car industry for decades. Now, I know from the last video that I made that the elephant in the room with this video is going to be a certain Canadian product called ACF 50. In my opinion, and it is just my opinion, for use on motorcycles, it's been a very successful marketing campaign. But the product is, in fact, no better than 
an average priced maintenance spray. About seven years ago when this product first came out I bought a brand new BMW R1200 GS. I picked it up in the middle of December but it was a nice dry day. I took it straight home knowing that I wasn't going to be able to ride the bike in earnest for another six weeks or so and treated it liberally with a CF50 that I just bought from Amazon. I think it cost me 16 or 17 pounds. Now I know what I'm doing and I know the areas of a bike that are prone to rust so I made sure that I'd made a proper job of it. As you know if you follow this channel my garage is quite a damp nasty place during the winter and to my dismay four weeks later when I checked the bike over properly I found that there were certain brackets underneath the fairing assembly etc which were showing signs of corrosion brackets which I treated very carefully there are several areas of this bike especially fasteners and that hollow axle at the back that were all showing early signs of corrosion. So I liberally treated all these areas again with ACF 50, thinking that perhaps I'd done something wrong in its application. And a month later when I dragged the bike out to actually start riding it, those areas had all got worse. Now I know I'm not the only person that's experienced this with ACF 50. Four years of bike maintenance videos has elicited many, many comments from other people who've experienced the same sort of issues with it. And needless to say, I never used that product again. I simply put it on the shelf and continued to use wax oil products that I've used for decades and the work great. Now the problem with ACF 50 is that it wasn't designed to be exposed to the elements. It was designed as a cavity corrosion inhibitor to protect hydraulics, control cables and electronics that are contained between the outer skin of aircraft and the inner walls. I know in the marketing it sounds very impressive when they tell you that this was designed for the aircraft industry and that it's used on fighter planes that are carried on aircraft carriers in the sea. But you see the thing is a jet fighter and a motorcycle are not the same thing. They're not made from the same materials and they don't operate in the same environment. And although the advertising tells you that this ACF 50 can last between a year and 18 months, when you actually read the small print, that's on the proviso that it's used in an area that's enclosed and not exposed to the elements. How many parts that fit that description do you have on a motorcycle? Now, the first time I rode that BMW after it had been treated, I got caught in very heavy rain, which, you know, it was hammering rain for about an hour and a half. And the following day, when I cleaned the bike off, I saw that this product had actually gone from all the high impact areas, the areas that experience wash off from the water that's been kicked up from the road, which didn't really bother me because I didn't intend using it again. But when Again, I started to research this product. ACF 50's recommendations are that when the bike comes in contact with salt spray, you should allow the bike to cool, rinse it all off with cold water, and then reapply the product. So hang on a minute, it's not the product that's protecting your bike, it's you that's protecting your bike by washing the salt off and then putting the product back on. In fact, if you read the mil-spec report on this product, it does in fact confirm that it's completely removed after two wash-off cycles. It's sort of like that story about the King's new clothes. Those people that swear by it because they found that they're having success with it are only really having that success because they're doing all the hard work and constantly cleaning it off and replacing it. Any £5 can of maintenance spray will give those results. I'm taking a complete leap of faith today with this product that I'm going to try out. Wax oil has always been my go-to protection product for motorcycles, cars, trucks, anything made from ferrous metal really, but it's not the easiest stuff to use. It doesn't work very well in an aerosol can, especially if the weather's cold, and it is a little bit obvious after application. Now, 
The plus side is it lasts for years once you've put it on. It doesn't wash off, but you can remove it quite easily if you need to remove it. Now, this is not a paid promotion in any way, shape or form, but recently I became aware of a wax oil product from a company that has an admirable reputation in corrosion care for motor vehicles since 1939. This is, if you like, a sort of viewers requests videos. I've had several people approach me over the last year recommending this product, saying that it's a sort of a halfway house between ACF 50 and the standard gloopy wax oil products that I've been using. It's called Wax Oil Spray and it's made by a company called Genolite which are probably more famous for their rust converter and rust removal products. I'm not sure if it is a new product or if it's been around for a while but I certainly wasn't aware of it until it was brought to my attention. Now I say halfway house because unlike normal wax oil products that will last several years Genolite recommend that this will only last approximately one year when exposed to the elements and high wash off but for best results they recommend that you apply it in late autumn for maximum protection during the worst months of the year now the trade-off for that lower life expectancy compared with conventional wax oil products is that it's virtually invisible once it's applied and it is much easier to apply from a spray can. In fact, I was really impressed by the way this stuff goes on. It flows very nicely from the can and I didn't come across any incidents of the nozzle clogging which is common with conventional aerosol wax oils. It's not as thick as conventional wax oils, it does go on very thinly, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Although I would recommend for high impact areas if you give it a try, like the inside of mud guards, I would give it about three coats. It uses a naphtha based solvent, which is actually the same stuff as the U-Pole degreaser that I use. And I would recommend that you use that to clean off soiled areas before applying any product like this. Now, I did approach Genolite for some information and they confirmed to me that it does contain hydro-treated oil as well as some waxes, although they didn't give away sort of any family recipes or anything, so I don't know exactly what type of oils and waxes they are. But I would suggest that the waxes contained are a very fine high grade to be able to negotiate a spray nozzle the way this product does. But for a company with Genolite's reputation, I trust that they will be suitable and they'll be well up to the job. The great thing about this product is although it flows very freely from the can, it's not prone to runs or sags and it dries completely transparent. Now I chose to try this treatment out on the bullet because the bullet of all bikes is probably potentially the most rust prone bike that I own. There is a lot of very thin tinware on it. Now I use about two thirds of a tin up treating the entire bike so if that lasts six months over a winter period that's good going. But your average motorcycle isn't going to have anywhere near as much metal on it as the bullet has so I would imagine for your average bike you're going to get away with about quarter to a third of a tin which potentially if it lives up to expectations is going to last you about three years. It does take a full 24 hours for this stuff to set properly and it leaves a very uniform sort of satin sheen. Just like wax oil when it has set it does still have a very slight tacky feeling to it and that's important but it's nowhere near as sticky and gloopy as ACF 50. This is a self healing product. If it's disturbed or damaged in any way, it's designed so that the product will creep back to the area where it's been removed. And this creeping action is also quite important for covering areas where you can't reach with a spray because it will 
eventually migrate into those areas, giving protection to areas that you can't actually reap. But I dare say that that does mean that it will also pick up quite a lot of dirt and grime, which is really about the same as any maintenance spray, ACF 50 or any other wax oil product that I've used. I fully understand the comments that have been passed on to me about it being a halfway house. This stuff is very persistent, it's not as easily removed as ACF 50 is, but it's obviously not as durable as a conventional wax oil product. But then Genolite are quite open about that. These sort of products all primarily work first of all as a barrier against the element, sealing the paintwork and the metal off from water and contaminants. But Genolite have also added some of their famous rust killers and rust inhibitors into the mix that will sort of arrest existing rust and prevent you rust from taking hold. Now, I practically stripped the bullet down to do this. As you've seen, I've treated the back and the insides of both side boxes all the lower parts of the frame, including the swing arm, paying particular attention to the wishbone where all the stone chips etc from the back tyre get thrown at the swing arm. I also covered all the bracketry associated with the centre stand and the side stand and as you've already seen the insides of the mud guards were cleaned off thoroughly and given three coats. You should make sure that you get into every nook and cranny that's exposed in those high impact areas low down on the bike. But as usual with any product like this, keep it away from your tyres and your brakes and don't get it on your footrests or your handlebars. I think it would be fair for me to say that this is not a product that's suitable for use on surfaces that get hot. As I've always recommended, I would resort to a good quality oil-based maintenance spray for those purposes. This wax oil doesn't have any aspirations or pretensions of being a motorcycle specific product. It was primarily designed for treating the underside of motor cars to inhibit and ward off rust. So on a motorbike it should be well up to the task and because of that looking through the various ads on Amazon I found that it comes up about a third cheaper than motorcycle related products with similar claims. Except this one has the backing of the famous Genolite name. Now I would like to say a big thank you to those people that have brought this to my attention. It is well worth looking at and I do indeed intend keeping you updated on the progress with this product as time goes on. I've even thought that perhaps we should do some sort of comparison test over the winter period where we can leave some pieces of metal exposed to the elements treated with various products and see which one comes out the best. Let me know what you think. I will of course track it down at the cheapest possible price and leave a link in the video description down below for those that want to give it a try. Once again thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate the time that you guys aside every week don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and i will of course be back next week so until then please ride safely and i'll see you soon <laughs>